Hadouken! For educational purpose only. Welcome back to the Talking Loud Podcast, man, where we discuss everything dank, sticky, icky, gassy, and all that good stuff, man. We got a lot of people in the chat already, got a lot of people to tune in, and I'm super stoked to have today's guest. I'm going to bring him in. I'm not going to stick anymore because we've been having a time off stage. What's going on, Grambo? Oh, man, speaking of gassy, here's Grambo. <laughs> gassy Grambo is in the house, oh, man. man. That's what's up, guys. So smash the like button for that. Let's see what's going on, guys. We want to do a quick audio mic check. Everyone can hear us. Drop in the comments. Let us know. We got Grambo in the house. So smash the like for that. I'm seeing all you guys tuned in. Um, But Grambo, what's going on, bro? How's everything going, my man? It's going great, man. So happy to be here. We we always hang out at the bakery, so I'm stoked to be uh, hanging out on your turf now. Hell yeah, dude. I'm stoked to have you here, man. So thanks for coming by, hanging out, uh, chilling out in the ICANN studio. You know, we get baked in the ICANN studio all the time. And uh, that's what we're going to do today, man. We're going to chill out. We're going to get baked, hang out with you guys. We got a lot of great things to talk about. We're going to touch on a few things about auto flowers as well, because Grandma knows auto flowers are pretty popular, right? Well, they're see. That's funny that you say that. They're not all that popular, right? Like, true, there's true. A lot, lot, lot of hate out there, and uh, yeah, we'll get into it. But the the dude grows homie out in Chicago, fucking uh, uh, Cortez the Conqueror, man. Cortez, he uh, he converted me. True. I mean, he sent us some bud, and I smoked it. I was like, this is the truth. Wow. I'm a convert to the auto flower, man. Man, shout out to Cortez, man. Cortez. My man Cortez doing some great stuff. Big up to my man Cortez. Yeah. Uh, shout out to that man. Um, but yeah, so we're seeing Grambo's mic is just a little bit low, so I'm going to just turn that up just a little bit. Uh, but it seems that everyone else is out here just chilling out, man. So Grambo, a lot of people who are chilling on the channel actually know who you are. And for mm. those who may not know who you are, like you're a big part of the DGC, man. You're oh, doing yeah. some great stuff. You're a f- super funny guy doing a lot of great commu- uh, com- comedy shows and great stuff for the community. So yeah. tell us a little bit about like, you know, what you, what you got going on, bro. Shout out yourself. Yeah, man. I've been a uh, OG pothead since I was 13. 13 years old weeds give me everything in my entire existence it just keeps giving more and more as i age and decided to uh move to color i was a musician my whole life so i'm from slipknot's hometown originally so uh, growing up it wasn't a pipe dream to be a musician you know your parents couldn't be like you're not gonna ever make money playing guitar it's like well mick and jim and Corey did Everyone's why couldn't we it, so uh yeah i was in a really popular band we were very very good but all we did was just drink and fight we would art we just play fucking we practice and we just get drunk and we'd argue and you know we all smoked weed but we we drink real hard and after a while i decided i was gonna stop drinking and move to denver and then and, and i was gonna switch over from being a musician to a comedian the thing i knew i was i wanted to do my entire life and i ended up hosting colorado's first ever open cannabis smoking show not just the comedians could smoke the audience could smoke wow and uh, so i did that for years right up first until ever. quarantine so what year was that bro sorry uh 2018 i think wow. it started yeah and so dope. we did that at the international church of cannabis yeah and uh we did that and then when that stopped uh, for covid i came back when we started doing it at studio 420 up in uh, thornton and yeah it was amazing and then uh, they end up stopped doing it and so right in that little pocket of uh me switching between doing different shows and different things. I went on the road for a month. I'd always done production. Like comedy doesn't pay the, the bills, you know? Okay. So I always uh, learned, like I always wanted to be a filmmaker. I always loved short films, TV yeah. animation. And so over COVID I had time, you know, that yeah. comedy stopped. And so I taught myself everything. If you're a fan of mine, Skills. or you see what I do. I've taught everything I know since June, 2020. I, I didn't, I never made a thing before that. I just, over COVID, I had that time. Yeah. And so I went on the road for five weeks, touring the country. Oh. One of my favorite guys ever. This is this dude's real name. This real, his com- comedian, his real, on his ideas, Papa Junior Joseph Papa Johnson. 
<laughs> and so, That's a month. <laughs> and so Papa Jr. Joseph Papa Johnson took me on the road for like five weeks. And so I'd been freelancing, doing like gigs. And for the first time in three years, I wasn't under contract for someone else. And uh, Grow Guru over at uh, Dude Grows had just uh, went on. You know, he'd been yeah. grinding there for, for a while. Years. And yeah, yeah. so uh, Scott ended up being real smart. And like they burned Guru out. So they ended up taking him and they split him up into two jobs. So Guru was doing me and Nice Guy Kenny's job. So anyone who knows Nice Guy Kenny over there. Shout out to Kenny, man. Kenny's the Kenny, man. man. I like Kenny, man. Kenny's such a great guy. He is cat. a sweetheart. He's yeah, the man. real deal, man. Yeah, he's a real, real great guy, man. And uh, I think Kenny was living out in Florida before he came up to Denver, right? If I'm not mistaken. He was a uh, uh, Scotty Reel's OG growing mate. So yeah. he ended up famously, Scotty moved to Colorado. Yeah. And then they, you know, uh, brother Trip and uh, Kenny's Grow got busted and they ended up on the TV show Border Wars. True. Yeah. Wow. That is fucking crazy, so bro. Border you, Wars, so bro. If you like nice guy Kenny, find his episode of Border Wars. Dude, shout yeah. out to Kenny, man. Kenny, they big were, ups, uh, man. They were allegedly borrowing power from the grid. Yeah. And, interesting, uh, man. <laughs> shout out to heavy. Kenny, man. You got to teach me some of those skills. <laughs> yeah, dude. So, yeah, that's. Uh, so, once Kenny got pinched and got off paper, he hightailed it up to Colorado. Fucking hell, so, bro. Yeah. That is pretty dope. But um, that that's that's interesting, man. But that's crazy, cause like you've been in the industry for so long now. You're OG pothead. You've been smoking. Uh, do you remember like the first time we actually hit a J? Like, what was that oh, like? Oh, I remember that. I remember it so <laughs> viscerally well that it's one of the it's the most ridiculous story ever. So I've always been just like a horny kid ever since I was in the womb. I was probably horny, and so I was twelve. My friend's older brother was 16. It was his 16th birthday party. And he's like, yo, there's going to be girls. You should come down. I was like, oh, I'm there, bro. Are you kidding me? And so I'm four years younger than all the girls. So they're all just like messing with me. And I'm just like, I love this. this is the best. <laughs> so then I take a little drink of strawberry Boone's farm. Yeah. Like alcohol. I was like, whoa, yeah. feeling fucked up. And then he goes to pass me a joint. And he's like, here, man, hit this. And I go, no, I'm good. And he goes, no, 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 hit it. And I go, no, I don't want to smoke it. And he goes, motherfucker, hit it. And I go, oh, you got to hit that shit now, yeah, bro. I'm going to hit you or you're going to hit that. <laughs> and so I hit it and immediately, I swear to God, immediately, it's just like, I feel the rightest I have in my whole, and I said out loud, I think I want to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> and sure as shit, I did. I can't THC. That I changed did. the game, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> And then famously, I said to him, because he'd always throw us like free nugs, like, you know, yeah. ah, guys, kids. He goes, you know, one of these days you're going to have to pay for it. And I was like, ah, I don't think I'll ever pay for weed. I'm going to grow that shit at some point. Well, see, that was, that came later. Yeah. See, good catch. <laughs> That's a better end to the story. But, but, uh, like, were you, acting, were you, so you were drinking and smoking that day. Like, did that, like, yeah. fuck you up? Completely? Like, oh, a lot of people yeah. do that and, like, they vomit. And, no, like, but what I did is twitch a lot. Yeah. I remember I was very twitchy. It was, and I asked him, I was like, Tyler, is it normal to twitch? And he's just like, yeah, shut up. <laughs> he's twitching before twitch was a thing. <laughs> yeah, dude, twitch.tv, twitch.me. Oh, man, that's so crazy, man. I'm loving hearing some of these stories, dude. Oh, but man. So, yeah, the first time smoking weed was very impactful. And then I pretty much uh, became a daily user around 14, 15. Yeah. And, yeah, I've pretty much smoked every single day for 23 years or so. Dude, man, and do you find like that – the 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 medicinal plants and you know being able to partake in that and just you know elevate your mind to a higher level has helped with you like being able to you know with your comedy stuff and you know just being smooth and coming up with some real funny well, stuff. Well, one of the things one of the things that's great about comedy, I always describe it creativity. Like this. It's like uh, you know when you sit and you get high and you're like, man, you know what I should have said? Well, in comedy, we get a second chance. I'll say that tomorrow. So, like, you get high, it's kind of like that thing where you kind of, like, paranoid go over your day, yeah. like, kind of maybe overthinking about things and everything. That actually is a big asset in comedy because then you get to go back. So, whereas maybe you're thinking about, oh, I shouldn't have said that in <laughs> high school. I look like a fool <laughs> to that girl in high school. So, and rather than thinking about that while you're baked, you turn that self-conscious laser onto your act. Yeah. And you, you write a new tag. You figure out a new joke. And but I can say with the utmost certainty, because I know I'm amongst friends here and I can speak openly about the, the plant me medicine. For sure. Weed has given me everything in my life. And when I get, you know, peak stone? Yeah. Like peak stone when you're the highest you can that be. You, that you can. You can you when plateau. I have <laughs> thoughts at peak stone, I write them down as the truth. Yeah. As I, if, wow. Like that's the reason I married my ex. It's yeah. like, 
I got stoned on edibles. It's like, that's the, that's the girl. The reason I had a kid weed was like, it's the time. The reason I started stand up, it's like, you need to do this. The reason I got a back injury and started taking Vicodin for a long time. Yeah. The reason I got off Vicodin, huge edible experience wow, where I was just bro. like, man, I don't want to, it's not even like, I don't want to get high anymore. I don't want to get low anymore. Yeah. And yeah. So weed has given me everything. And so when I link up with dude grows and now it's like the dream gig of hanging out with my friends and like making, I can the use dream, all dream. of my skills and I can work 13 hours a day and not feel like I worked a minute, you I know? know? So we just continues to give to me. And I, I don't like saying that in front of normal people. Cause it sounds like I'm some sort of weird freaky weed cultist, but I kind of am. The weed, it actually gives you like a higher understanding, man. It so does. I respect that, man. I honestly rate that because, like, personally, I come up with a lot of high ideas, man. And, <laughs> high and ideas. that's, yeah, that's, that's high ideas. I like that, yeah. man. I'm going to take I that can't one. I can't take that. To, <laughs> it's actually a website called highideas.com oh, where people fuck, post yeah. their high ideas. <laughs> I like that, man. But I'm definitely a, a person like that, man. I write shit down when I'm high and then I come back and I look back at it and I execute <laughs> those ideas. And I'm actually like, you know, that was a good fucking idea. Right. You know, it seemed like it was a crazy ass idea but well, like every now and then they are crazy so, yeah, sometimes I, you guys I are found crazy. a note in my phone that had like it, it was coded in orange which means that's an important note and I opened up the note the next day after being high and it just said these goats are leaderless <laughs> what was that about no clue who are the goats what are the goats <laughs> but it was orange as if this is an important thought remember to keep that one my... <laughs> these goats are leaderless hell yeah man oh uh, dude that is wow that's crazy man but guys today we're gonna have a great episode man so smash the like button if you haven't already Do let's it. see how many likes we can get we got almost 100 people tuned in we ain't even got 100 likes so something ain't adding up what are you guys doing but um, we got a lot of great questions coming in already, man. This is also Q and A. If you guys got any Q and As for Grambo, drop it in. If you got any Q and As about autos, drop it in. Hit me. Um, we got a lot of uh, great, great stuff coming in, man. So I just want to shout out all these people. But Kevin Hunt has actually this is an interesting one. Dispos definitely sell autos. Why wouldn't they? They just need product. They don't care about quality. Um, it's kind of like a buffet, right? They they don't care what's in there. They just gotta make sure it's stocked. Yeah, literally, for the most part. And then we actually got another one, which is straight up about autos, man. And uh, where is it, man? Auto question. This is OG Lieutenant Blazer. Physic physically agitating the plant during veg stage to stimulate animal or wind disturbances to increase trichomes and flavonoids as a defensive response. Uh, does that, you know, give you increased potency? I don't love it. You know, I, I am a big fan. We were just talking about a, a new dude grows topic of like uh, when doing pheno hunting, introducing uh, different stressors yeah. to different plants to try to like get different recessive genes to turn on so you can get those phenotypic expressions. Yeah. So I really believe in that in photos, but not really in autos. You know, you want to make sure that your auto stays happy. If, if uh, you know, if you know what you're doing and you feel comfortable, yeah, agitate it, get in there, do a little bit. But if you're new to autos, just be gentle. You want yeah. to make sure you don't disturb the tap root. You're not, you know, everything about it. Like it's a, it's a very, I think that's why people don't like it. It's very, very finicky. Yeah. And then the quality wasn't there, but now that the quality's there and the, the lines are getting stabilized a little bit, you know, you know, play around. If, if you got a few extra plants, if you popped some extra beans, you know, Take take one plant, rough it up. Maybe if it you know if it herms out and it just like dies or something, who cares? But you know you learned a lesson and you still got a bunch of dank bud from your other plants. So be gentle in the beginning and introduce controlled stress as you go. Would be my advice. Yeah, well said, man. You said that actually like a champ, and I would think I would agree with that, man. Because I found a lot of the times when I do less with the autos, I get better results, better flavor, potency, yield. The autos just look better when they grow in <laughs> all together. So sometimes when you try to do too much, uh, you can end up shooting yourself in the foot but i like what he said actually because he mentioned very gentle animal or wind disturbances and that's actually how the mm. plants grow out in nature right, so a of lot course, of times of you know plants will be growing out in nature and a, an animal might walk past you know just brush up on it or something so to that extent you know maybe just get a little fan in there that might actually stiffen up those branches a little bit but again if you do too much you may just shoot yourself in the foot but i don't think that tossing a little fan in there you know stiffening yeah. up those branches well you're gonna want idea. that anyway i always take that like <laughs> That air circulation is kind of a given. Yeah. So, we, you know, I we, I didn't catch any. It's a gentle in there. Yeah. But uh, in gen in general, I expect there's just going to be some 
gentle agitation just naturally you, yeah. you need to be circulating that air because i found that when you don't do it man even with like photo period plants i've i've got airflow at the top those branches don't get hit by the breeze and what mm. happens is that when you flip to flower all of those bitches are flopping over man it can't mm. even support itself yeah. it's like some weak feeble branches so just have that air circulation at the bottom of the canopy and at the top of the canopy. and if you can get if you can if you have the budget and you can get a couple can fans to mount on all four walls if you have like a grow room yeah uh, opposed to like a tent or a cabinet or anything but if you have a proper room i always like if you can take like one wall you got a can fan that's like pointing up and the next one pointing up and you got them a little bit die it creates a tornado vortex inside your room and if you set your dehue right in the center of that vortex it just it's going to circulate that air above and below everywhere and it's going to draw all the excess moisture right into your thing so it's not going to have a it's also kind of helps reduce pm all those leaves that want to over touch and everything you get them shaking no place for moisture to build up yeah, so true, man. That is 100% accurate. So uh, have you grown any autos recently? Like, when- No, this is the thing about uh, Reese. I've, I've, uh, I got so many auto seeds going on, and I've been working with my friends that are in the, uh, as the dude likes to call yeah. it up in Canada, the <laughs> legacy market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I still work with them all the time. They, uh, you know, we just got them all switched over to Grow Dots and everything. It was, Perfect. It was pretty hilarious just to watch them, like, watch me on the show, because they started watching the show because I was on there. And they're like, is that shit real? And I'm like, you know it's real man so they just got all switched over so yeah they've been growing uh you know, photos for their thing but then gotcha. they got a little uh, uh veg room that's just on <laughs> 24 hours a day so they throw autos in there okay and they've been very 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 shocked at like wow like you don't get huge yield but if you find the right genetics you just get this nice big bud of frosty dank bud and yeah. you can try out lots of different strains it's a good way to pop beans you know a lot of us aren't good at popping seeds we're a lot of clone only sort of folks especially, so especially here in denver that is so true man that is so true a lot of people overlook that and mm-hmm. like a lot of people like i actually speak to a lot of people they're like yeah i do clones like haven't popped beans in years. Yeah. Like, what do you mean you haven't popped beans in years? It's man? a luxury, right? Like, yeah. if you, if you can exist not popping beans, that's a luxury. Yeah, that means dude. you have a rich crew of people with a lot of genetics that you're not going to get hop viroid from. Yeah, so true, man. No great question actually from Don. Uh, asking about the best auto seed bank. We can't post links on here, mm-hmm. so we've got to be careful with that. But definitely check. I would say check out Seedsman. Uh, I got a link on my link tree, so you can Google it, get creative, and find that, mm-hmm. and you can snag a little discount. But we don't want to put any links on here, man. And uh, hipsters and hippies. Shout out to hipsters and hippies, man. My, my man, man, I love this dude, man. Hell and yeah. he actually says, I love the Grambos now. So used to talking with a camera or an audience, <laughs> man. This is coming so natural. I'm I'm muck loving to today's episode yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no this is the i've been doing uh that's why i was just perfect for a uh, dude grow situation where it's like like i can do the back end and i can do the front end i can smoke weed i can hang out with scotty reel and hit joint for joint for joint Literally and go. i can still run a live stream acing it you know yeah. it's it's a i used to play this is a little thing about grambo back in the day i used to play uh semi-pro poker on the internet oh, and shit. so i would nine t- i would play between nine and 15 tables simultaneously yeah so i'd play nine as my i play i'd play six cash games and three tournaments okay and so I, i'm just like click 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 so when i got to like doing the live stream and all the the high level production stuff all I did was smoke weed and play poker all day, man. So this is like, this is easy. I don't even have to lose money at the end. I might not be down a grand at the end of the day. Shit, this, yeah. is, this is all but about it's it. fun, man. And speaking of that, man, so tell us a little bit about that. How has that experience been, man? Because you're doing some great stuff, and I know how, how much work it takes to be behind the scenes and, and be, you know, flipping cameras and switching scenes and editing and producing and all that. So tell us a little bit about it, man. You said, like, you just mentioned it. It seems like it's super fun, but, like, how has that experience been all together? I would say the number one thing is do things. I I say this like no BS, man. Do things. Do things that have no value in your current thing. So uh, OBS, you know, every person that runs streaming, you'll either know slobs or obs, you know, you you know, one of them. And so I had no real reason to learn OBS. But over quarantine, I just Googled randomly just because I was high and I was like, has a show ever been called the not late show? There's always a late <laughs> show and the, the, you know, the after show, whatever. There's never been a show called the not late show. Yeah. And so I was like, we should make a, a comedy talk show over quarantine. And then we started doing it and it got really popular. So I started like taking OBS really seriously. Yeah. And then like we stopped doing it, you know, it was just a stupid thing we did. But because of the not late show, I learned OBS inside now backwards and forwards to the point where I could teach people about it. So then when dude grows, it's like, we use OBS. It's like, 
I'm, I'm I give I teach tutorials about that. We use Adobe Premiere. I teach tutorials about everything, that. man. You got everything yeah. started. I that we grow weed. I also teach tutorials <laughs> about that. I also grow my own weed yeah. as well. <laughs> and that's how I found Dude Grows. Funnily enough, uh, 2015. <laughs> uh, I was getting here the same legacy market friends I'm talking about. Yeah. They, uh, they needed a guy to uh, step up and run a, uh, a, uh, a 99 plant count uh, house. And I got tapped to do it and I didn't want to come and show up and just be a bum. So I started in 2015 watching you. every YouTube channel podcast, but everything was real kind of like boring and I didn't catch on except for one show. The Dude Grow Show. DGC. And yeah, I became DGC, DGC early, man. DGC. Shout yeah. out to the DGC, man. That's what is up. Guys, smash that like button because we got a lot of people tuning in here who are DGC fam rapping the DGC. Rep. So show some love for the DGC, man, because we're doing some great things. And Grambo's out here kicking it with us, man. Yeah, man. Um, now, Grambo, we actually got another great question which came in. And I think that this one uh, you can probably vouch for, man, because Grow Dots and Reach Out. It's not even a question. Joseph Moore is just is making a statement, and I fully agree with it. He says, Grow Dots and Reach are awesome. What do you think of Grow Dots and Reach <laughs> So, Reach I mean, that stands on its own two feet, right? If if I don't have to push Reach you guys know. We it's, love Reach over here, too. It's freaking, you know, it's, uh, it's compost tea, essentially, instant tea you know it's it's amazing what i'll say about grow dots is that uh you know now that i work with the guys i've lost all credibility right yeah. i can't just be like grow dots are you know grambo approved so i'll say it like this like when i first got with the crew i was dubious okay i was dubious like come on scotty real with the claw machine and with the you know yeah. like all the crazy stuff like oh yeah you got these like pellets you're gonna put in there and then uh, the first batch of Cherry Paloma from JR Token came in. And he's like, hey, bro, you want to help me harvest this grow dot bud? And I was like, I would love to because I would like to know more. And, oh, I swear to God, I, I, I'm trimming this bud. And I'm just sitting jaw agape. And I go, you didn't feed these things? Yeah. You didn't feed the, these. These are healthy, big, giant nugs. <laughs> and you didn't. Put an A and B. You didn't have to put your silicon first. You didn't have to A and B. You didn't have Nothing. to. You didn't have to P A. All the crap, man. So yeah, it's a recharge does what it does, and then grow dots. Man, people are sleeping on it. I think it's going to be one of the things that really change. I think it might be bigger than recharge. I really do. Yeah, because it's that all in one sort of like formulation where you can you don't have to do much. And a grower, a lot of growers, I know weed smokers don't always like to be doing a lot, man. Some people like to do a lot, but personally, well, in the beginning, yeah, in it's the beginning, very yeah. easy for the first three years. You love oh, doing it's it. It's easy to be. But then good. you're like, no, year man. seven, year eight, year nine. It's just like, man, I've been doing this for. Way you know too what long. I'd love is to go away for the weekend. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and not have to have that's a babysitter. That's when the issues come in as well. Hey, you ever ha you ever not have kids yet still? need a babysitter that's what welcome it's like. to grow in good weed <laughs> literally man you gotta get like a babysitter or if not the very least like a drip irrigation system and yeah, make sure to yeah. get your ass back home as yeah. soon as you can oh, <laughs> don't fuck around man we got a great question from dab marino random one though My and grandma this is for you are you left-handed <laughs> oh this uh did you watch the instagram feed uh yeah I, I i openly say on instagram like uh, it's hard to get a hold of people on shows i come from com comedy background I, I i respond to every comment i respond to every message hit me up josh grambo on instagram yeah uh i love it so uh when you flip to a selfie cam and instagram it mirrors you okay know? and so i was doing a behind the scenes of me editing and so i'm using the mouse in my left hand according I'm to their field around. of view yeah. but it's actually flipped so no i'm a righty with the judicial prejudice I'm i didn't even I'm think of that man that is righty. crazy dab marino good spot roski good spot yeah yeah, yeah dude awesome wow. name too are you the dab marino it's like <laughs> i know dab marino goes like back back so are you the dab marino maybe he is i don't know <laughs> this is the only one i know <laughs> but um we got darian howard as well what's a good humidity level in temperature uh and temperature i think to keep the grow tent at for my autos in the seedling stage uh, I'm probably say for the seedling stage, you want to keep it at a higher humidity so that seedling can really flourish. If it's a lower humidity, it'll still live, but it just would not flourish. And with autos, you really want them to flourish and get the for most out of the veg stage, the seedling stage, because they're going to flower on you as soon as possible. So I aim for about 70% in the seedling stage. Actually, if I'm being honest, uh, sometimes I can even push it to 75. But as you get into flower, you want to reduce that RH a bit. So you want to go down. So when you get to flower, you want to bring it down to, you know, 
maybe 60, 55. You want to start to bring it down to later into flower you go. Mm. What do you think, Rambo? What comes to mind is, you know how they say uh, the second law of thermal dynamics. Or no, nah, that, that's uh, that's entropy. Don't let me get out too far. <laughs> but, you know, they say uh, every for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction, right? Yeah. So I would say that applies to uh, auto flowers where, like, they're auto, right? They're on autopilot for, like, the second half. But you really got to ba- – it ends up being the same amount of work. Even though they're kind of, like, less work yeah. in the back end, they're a little bit more work. In the front in end, the front end yeah, you know point. so you really have to make sure that you uh, you baby them in the beginning and i think matt's 100 percent on with the the te- and uh it's always that distinction we're in that uh, that middle gray zone between the switch over between hps and uh and led yeah so i know a lot of people uh, you know i know like a uh, hot rods head stash uh, yeah, hot, shout out to hot yeah Rod, good man. friend of mine he's <laughs> yeah. running those gavitas just he's like he's in the sun. Can you imagine running like several Gavitas? Like you live in the sun, bro. Yeah, that's right. So saying. it's a big difference if you run LED or you run HID. Those are two different temperatures that you're gonna want to run, and then humidity affects temperature. So if you have HID, it's a different answer. If you have LED, good point as well, because that that'll really affect things, man. And it, and a lot of people don't even think about that. But guys, smash the like button because Grambo's out here dropping some facts for you guys. And uh, hipsters and hippies, man, wait, see. So you guys are saying you'll need a drip sitter? <laughs> That's exactly what we're saying, Shit, bro. Look at me, man. My, my drip needs a sitter all day, son. <laughs> oh, man, I love this, man. Uh, dude, but, uh, like, tell us a little bit about, like, you know, your experience in Denver so far, man. You know, you've been living out here for a while. You mentioned that, you know, you've been hitting up the International Church of Cannabis. You actually work there as well, do a few things there. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. How is the International Church of Cannabis, man? I've never actually been. So just as it's a weird coincidence with me linking up with Dude Grows, it's like, ah, we go. OG and all this thing. Same thing with the Church of Cannabis, yeah. the, the ICOC or the ICOC. The, uh, ICOC. The ICOC. ICOC. <laughs> they, hate when I, they hate when I say that, but I can't let them off. So, yeah, Steve and Adam, these two awesome guys, they, yeah. uh, they actually challenged the government. They're like, we okay. want to be a church. We yeah. want, we're for real. And they challenged them and they won. Wow. And so they are the elevationists. That's dope. And so uh, they hold uh, actual, actual service. Yeah. And uh, it's very comical. <laughs> it's all tongue in cheek. They say, uh, you know, we just wanted uh, the right to smoke weed. They said you have to have a uh, an actual religious function. Yeah. And so we uh, get high and light a candle. Wow. So light your joints off this candle and praise you, the God. You can actually smoke while you're in there and stuff? For services, yeah. You have, to, services? You have to sign up okay. and then you become an elevationist. You become an elevationist, yeah. dude. Ele- I think it's elevationist.org. You can uh, go just sign up and that way you're a member. I think it's oh. free. It might be a dollar or two. I don't know. I can't remember. It's been a while since I, I've been OG. No, no you know. fee, if anything. I've been all. an elevationist for a hot minute. Yeah, he's been an elevationist out here. <laughs> so yeah, now uh, I got two roommates, uh, John Mags, comedian John Mags, and my old Zamboni buddy. I drove a Zamboni yeah. at a hockey rink for oh. like 10 years in That's Iowa. freaking fire, though. Yeah. And so the guy who gave me DMT for the first time, uh, oh. we all live together. Now they both work there. Okay. okay. And so, yeah, they run the light show. It's like a trippy laser light show that they do like yeah. five or six times a day. And yeah, if you're a member and you go to services, uh, Mags is hosting comedy shows there. So now like he's taking on, I'm so busy now. Like I went from like, you know, all the time in the world to like, oh crap, I'm kind of slammed all of a sudden. Time is, time is so I hosted commodity. a show on uh, on Broadway every Saturday. Anybody that lives in Denver, this goes for you Sweet. and the uh, Mrs. Can THC. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody out there, free show, Broadway at Grandma's House Brewery, 930 every Saturday. We've been doing it for a year and a half. I don't have a time. I, I was there last Saturday and performed. But free show, come hang out. You tell John Mags you are a DGC, you will get the, or if you are, you're DGC or I can THC, you will. DGC or I can yeah. THC, it all rhymes, man, and yeah. just tell them. So yeah, <laughs> they'll take care of you because they're, they're, they're good people out there at Grandma's House and Church of Cannabis. They're all the same people, honestly. And you know how it is, you get a tight knit little crew and uh, yeah. we all smoke weed together. And Those are the best ones, man. Yeah. That's when everything works the best and you yeah. know everything is a really tight knit group, man. So shout out to you guys. I got to hit that up. I've literally always wanted to go there, but I just haven't been yet, man. Like, you know, like we said, time is a valuable commodity and it's well, so DGC hard to get there. DGC Cup is coming up and I DGC know that a, a lot of people want to uh, do that. If you guys don't know about DGC Cup, dgccup.com, man. It is uh, tickets are uh, flying out. I, I'm so, I was telling, I can before this, like, I'm kind of doing comedy and all the stuff. I'm kind of dead inside. I don't get excited very easily. It's just like, you know, you get, I, excitement breeds nervousness, and I can't True. afford to be nervous, True. you know? So I just kind of like be chill, but I am legit 
excited for this DGC Cup. 50 strains, some of the best growers all across the country coming in. Oh, man, you get a 1E, a lighter for signing up. I'm going to perform, dude. Food truck. Raider dude, Grandpa's Raider. going to perform. Oh, we got to yeah. be out there, bro. We got to be out there, man. Uh, I'm going to be out there. We yeah. Guys, smash the like for that. DGC fam, if you're in the house, rap it. Let me see DGC in the chat. Let me see DGC in the comments. We're going to have a great time out of the DGC Cup, man. Oh, it's going to sure. be sick. It's going to be fucking fire, dude. 420 Trees. Great question, my man. How early can I start using IPM regime, IPM regime and seedling your veg? Immediately. Immediately. Yeah. You don't even need to wait. Like, I mean, you could start by just like wiping down your tent while your beans are popping. So true. You know, like it, it's IPM is small, small, small thing. So you start immediately. Make sure you buy. If you're using cocoa, buy a good cocoa. Yeah. You know, if so you're, uh, you know, like if you're using a flood and drain system, make sure your water's on point. Make sure yada, yada, yada. You know, make sure you change your skirt on your carbon filter make sure you know your, your outer filter the pre-filter make sure you change that every now and then S stuff starts accumulating in there blows around it doesn't necessarily stick in there the way you think it would yeah. so yeah ipm starts early and often man immediately yeah you don't even need to wait for that you can start in seedling stage and what i would say man because i found this with my seedlings is that uh, i've been popping seedlings straight into the soil and i had no problem with it but when i reuse my soil after a few runs i found when i pop the seedlings directly into the soil there's something in there i you know the natural uh, environment within that soil the the microclimates mm. the microbiologies all that stuff there's living stuff going on in there man mm. so i found when the seedling very seedling it will pop through and i'll see like the first set of true leaves and stuff uh and i'll see like you know the cotyledons and stuff like that but it'll just freeze the seedling will freeze and when i like leave it for a few days i'm checking to see what's going on and i just pull it out a little bit all the roots have been eaten man mm. so i've started off like just putting it into like you know a little jiffy pod starting it off in like a, wow. a rapid root cube okay. or something so that gives me like a nice sterile environment man i actually went so far as to like bake my soil you know i did all that to yeah. try it and i uh, tried to sterilize the soil and i still had the same issue wow. so i found that you know just start things off really nice and slow and you'll be good to go yeah, man. man and uh once again this is why it's hard working with these guys because you sound like a shill but yeah. I swear to God, get recharged on your roots the minute that tap root pops out. Get, yeah. get it slathered it in microbes. It. it doesn't have to be recharged proper. It's just the easiest way to do it, you know. But get microbes on it immediately. That's the theme of the day. Immediately. Yeah, we You know my buddy Lee? Immediately? Yeah, immediately. His <laughs> first name is Immediate. Yeah, yeah. Immediately. <laughs> like, I got this homie as well. I call him, uh, his, 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 I call him Mr. Case, mm. right? His first name is Justin. Ah. And he's always telling you about precautions. <laughs> yes. You know, and he actually wrote a book. It's called Precautions by Justin Case. Oh, <laughs> I'm about to get that one. This is, I got some weak ass jokes. I'm sorry, Hard man. <laughs> oh, man, Grambo. But, Nance, thanks for hanging out, man. I'm having a great time so far. I got another J to blaze up. I see yeah. you just hit up that pipe, man, but oh, yeah. let's get a little bit controversial, man. So All right. we're actually talking about autos and we've been having a great time talking about autos so far, dude. But you mentioned uh, just before, a lot of people say, you know, they get autos and they find it just doesn't taste as potent as some of the photos. They find that the photos, they grow better and they just taste more potent than they, I don't know, man. Mm -hmm. But have you tasted any auto that, you know, is rivaling photos or maybe autos that are better than photos? Because... I, I, I know what I'm going to say on it. <laughs> so, uh, I, once again, with an asterisk, I'll say that the uh, I've tasted a lot of auto flour. Yeah. It's usually, you know, oh, we'll go with average, right? Yeah. It's it's not it's not the best weed on earth. Yeah. Not bad. I would smoke this, right? And then I got a, uh, you remember back in the day, if you're old enough, sometimes you would uh, you'd put your weed in an old film canister. Yeah. Isn't there film canisters? The old school yeah, ones. Yeah, man. Like so uh, I got a, a package in the mail. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was a series of little film canisters <laughs> full of uh, very, very quality auto flower from some grower in Chicago. Yeah. yeah some sort of conqueror fellow. <laughs> and uh, allegedly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, dude, I was smoking that. I told him I'm going to smoke this on the Dude Grow Show each week because I, oh. you know, I, I got my home weed and then I got my, my work weed. And then uh, so I was like, I was going to be my, my work weed yeah. for because Banner will always uh, throw me Banner, man. He grows some of them best weed on earth if you come to the DG, dgc cup ask banner for a nug he yeah, might do he might grows that fire yeah bro. there's and two people that i don't refuse their weed it's banner and jaron from new millennium both of them man both if of they them, offer me, you a nug you 
bow down. It's taken, you man. Take they it. both of them to me seem like full on weed connoisseurs, dude. Especially Banner. They're man. Yodas. Yeah, he They're comes out with like three, four jars. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I got this one. This one tastes like this. This one smells like that. Have the. I'm like, and yeah, so man, I, I preface that because I'm smoking Banner weed. Yeah. You know, I'm smoking Uncle Jim weed from Oregon. I'm smoking Uncle Jim. Yeah, Shout out Uncle Jim. I too. get some of the best weed ever, right? Like I'm very, very. I'll check my weed privilege here. Yeah. I understand. I'm. I live in Denver. We have the best <laughs> yeah. commercial market, in my opinion. And I, I agree. Think, I, I think agree. we got the best. Uh, some of the best. I won't say we got the best local. You know, growers. There's yeah. a lot of great growers out there. Yeah. So I can't go that far. But we're very spoiled. And so I get this. Uh, these photo containers. Ironic. How I didn't even think about that. How ironic is that? That freaking right. autos came in photo containers. <laughs> so true, man. Oh, blowing, dude. We just broke the internet. <laughs> what oh. the fuck? Holy crap! I didn't even think of that either, man. <laughs> oh. We were saying that new went over both of our heads. <laughs> I wonder if that was a reference. Cortez, shout out, man. Yeah. Oh, that's deep Dope. cut. Uh, See, yeah, I, I, cro- I ironically cracked these photo containers to smoke these autos. Yeah. And bro, I am hit with Flavor Town USA. I wow. can't believe how dank this auto nug is. And Terp I'm smoking Nation. it. Tirp Nation, dude. And so, yeah, I freaking, uh, I became a convert right then and there. So I started like branching out. And since I started giving it more of a chance, I've been finding more like random auto stuff that I'm liking. And uh, I haven't grown out their stuff, but a lot of the homies recommend Fast Buds. Yeah. You know, I have no affiliation with them. It's just I hear they're good people, stable genetics, yeah. good flavors. So, Shout out Fast Buds, yeah, man. Yeah, like Shout their out stuff. Fast Buds. And, uh, yeah, man, freaking it's but here's the thing. There's no, uh, you know, don't get lost in the sauce. Right. Do what you like. Grow yeah. the things you like. If you can't find autos you like, don't do it. You know, but here's the thing. This is one of the things I asked Cortez the Conqueror when he was on. I asked are autos the future. Right. Because as they hybrid together and the, the rooter, because it's the rooter Alice in it that makes it the, the, the auto as the uh, the the actual like lines become more stable and the genetics become more like dialed in. Yeah. I just don't see a reason why a lot of people wouldn't pop beans. Like if you're going to pop beans from, you, you know, you, you can't clone it. That's a nightmare, yeah, but they'll true. probably figure that out someday. Yeah. You know, I'm no breeder. It's got pros and cons, you know, so like you can't clone it, but you got it to go seed to harvest real quick. And with some of these new breeders, like you mentioned, doing some great stuff with the autos, like you can get some great plants some mm. with some nice yields and it's autos seed to harvest real quick. You don't have to worry about flipping timers or light leaks or, you know, getting a sealed off dark room or anything And I will like say a uh, plant count is a big so thing. true so if you are restricted by plant count autos might not be the thing for you you know i always grew up i associated autos with sea of green yeah you know so Facts. so if you were growing out 50 little plants in one gallons stuff some autos in there man just bang them out and do it you know yeah so if, if you're restricted by plant count grow some big old trees you know and once again in the future autos might catch up but as of right now i would say if you're uh, if you're going for yield and quality, grow photos. And yeah. if you're just going for quality, grow either. Yeah, switch it up, man. And you get, get you can actually get a little bit of benefit from both. So switch it up if you got space. You know, throw one or two autos in your veg tent. See how that goes for you. You may find something that you like. You may find something that you don't like. And Who you knows? know what I would say is the most valuable thing you're gonna get out of those knowledge. Heck yeah, that's what's you're up. gonna learn. You're gonna learn something about growing, and maybe you'll never grow. Maybe you'll grow a couple of runs of auto flowers, and you hate it. And you're just like, I'm never going to run them again. And you know what? You learned a valuable lesson that you're going to teach me, hopefully, someday. So true, man. And Illinois John says, you have smoked so many pinchies from a film canister that the bottom broke out. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> my man is deep. It's gone. He's got it's those gone. pinchy fingers. <laughs> Oh, uh, man, but a great question actually came in from Andrew, man. And shout out to Andrew for this question, because this is something I see a lot of people asking, and I see a lot of people doing, man. So uh, he actually says, I top dressed with Dynomyco on day 13 on my bubblegum auto. Shout out to you using Dynomyco. Good on you for that. Um, is that benefiting my plant any? I know it's better to apply to the root, but it's not transferring but not transferring autos as in not transplanting. So what I would say is that you're absolutely right. It's always better to put on the roots, but if you can uh, and you don't have the opportunity to put in the roots, you can pop little holes into the soil and see if you can put the dynamico down in there. Mm. And that's actually a tip that we got from Ari on the Talking Loud podcast. Like and Ari it. is a great affiliate, works for dynamico. He knows everything about dynamico. And he said, just pop a few holes in there, you know, not massive holes, but pop a few little holes and stick that dynamico in there. So that way it can seep down in when you water and that way you can really get in there so mm. um great little tip man you use any 
Mike Rise or anything like that when you grow? I mean, always recharge. Uh, yeah. I, be- I become <laughs> I've, I become accustomed to my style. I grew with the uh, I'm changing now. I'm getting into so after the divorce, right? I didn't know if I was ever gonna grow again. I had my beautiful room. I had my eight lighter. My my. Uh, one car garage, I'd, I'd sealed it to the point of like ridiculous, watertight, airtight. I flooded my grow one time. Damn, oh, it's watertight. Yeah, it's watertight. Oh, it's, it, it filled up to damn near you the... flooded your grow, uh, dude? Like, was that on purpose or was no, that like an accident, man? Uh, like, how I, did that happen? With Grambo, you never know if he's testing something. Grambo's man. number one <laughs> tip, get a float valve. Oh, get shit. Get a float valve. You were under like DWC or RDW? No, or was it just, just your toilet? Just like, didn't turn off the freaking... Just didn't turn off the water as it was oh, filling shit. up the thing and got distracted. Last okay. night I got really I got high you. and was cooking a baked potato and left it in the oven for six hours. Jesus so Christ, man. Th- I got a lot of baked potato. I got a lot to think about. It was a delicious <laughs> potato. That thing was done, son. Six hours slow baked potato, man. <laughs> six hours slow baked. That's the I bake my potatoes like I bake myself, man. Slow baked all day. <laughs> slow baked. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. It's crazy. But it's so true, man. Sometimes you can't just get distracted. And one thing I've noticed, man, is prevention is better than cure. So a lot of the times yes. in the grow room, you can do small things to prevent any issues coming up in the grow room, man. Like little things like running your things on a, on a surge protector that has enough jewels to handle that load. If mm. something goes on, it would not cause a fire. Or it'll cause a lesser double risk and fire. triple checking your timers. Yes, if you have those tab checking. timers, I have those tab timers, man. That's what I use. And if you don't, uh, maybe the, or if the power goes out, you know, make sure you account like, oh, I was at work and the power went out, but I wasn't there. Doesn't affect me, or does it? Yeah, so true, man. That is actually something that you need to look back on because those tab timers, you got to go back and like readjust every time, man. <laughs> oh, man. Even if you unplug it, you got to go back and readjust, man. You so, got it. <laughs> uh, hipsters, that's one seriously baked potato. <laughs> <laughs> is he talking about me or? I think both of us, man. Hey. The potato and the, the potato. I look like a potato with a beard. <laughs> No, man, you look like a fly potato. You got that suit on. <laughs> they call me Mr. Potato. Mr. Potato. The man. head. I love it, dude, man. I think I actually we've done a lot of uh, great little things, man. We touched on a lot of great stuff. And if you guys got anything that you guys want to ask, be sure to drop it in the comments, man. But I got a question for you, Grambo. And this yeah, is man. something that I like to do when everyone comes onto the show. Because right, I like to high. say that everyone that comes onto the show is my bud. And I like to find out what you do with your buds, man. So this is the Know Your Bud segment, man. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is ask you a couple questions man there's no right or wrong answer but what i want to do is find out what's your preference and why all right all right so first off man easy one when it comes to germination what's your preference straight into the soil glass of water method or uh paper towel method ah i am a glass of water guy i love uh just that instant feedback of the floaters and sinkers i like the idea of getting an idea where i'm at right off the bat and then, uh, yeah, once uh, once I see any sort of crackage, then I, I throw them into some soilless. I'm, I've always been a cocoa guy, so I'll pop them from uh, solo cups once they go down into one gals and then yeah, then up. Yeah, so you're a fan of transplanting up, right? Yeah, I go up. I, I grew up from, I would go, uh, I, d- I don't do this anymore. Back in the day, I used to always go solo one, three, five, seven. It was preposterous. Yeah, like, like, it was a, the like, wrong, a, like a routine. It was the wrong thing to do. Yeah. Don't do that. So how do you do now? Well, so like I said, it's been a minute right now. My, my girls are just popping. They're just, they're about to go into, uh, and I'll ask your opinion. What do you think? I'm about to do it. I, uh, I've been out of the game for a, a minute, so I, I don't always like to claim I'm expert status all the time. What do you think? So I'm going yeah. from solo cups. Do you think I should just, uh, go to like a three gal? What do you think out of a, out of a solo cup? Where, where do you go? Interesting, man. That, that's a great question because recently I've been going from solo cup to one gallon. Yeah, and that's what for, I've always done. And that for me, I have no problem with I actually okay. like that. It yeah. gives me like a little bit of control, a little bit of space in the grow room. But after that, that's where the question comes in mm. for me. So do you go from one gallon to two gallon? Because that's what I just did. Okay. And I feel like I transplanted like two weeks ago and the plants are already need to transplant again. Mm. So maybe I should have gone to three. But either way, it all depends on like your space and your setup. So I'll say there's no right or wrong answer. It all depends on like what your space looks like, what your setup looks like, and uh, what what your gross space could take, man. Because like if you got no space for a bunch of seven-gallon pots, you can't go up to seven-gallon pots, Of course. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Like, it's like, well, what you want is a, a, a nice organic live bed you can do that you want a no-till bed you know yeah so in a perfect world you know yada yada but so i'm actually super paranoid right now i've grown in rooms my whole life i've never grown in anything less than like a 10 by 8 yeah and so uh now i'm growing in a fucking 
a four by two. I got a four by two flower tent. What am I going to do? How do you even grow? So I've been messaging J.R. Toker. Uh, J.R. Toker. J.R. Toker. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's like the, the, the past pronoun of J.R. Token is yeah. J.R. Toker. Shout out J.R. <laughs> and so I've been texting him low key at night. Like, yo man, I'm scared about growing in a tent. What do I do? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm it's used a little to just, bit different. You know, I'm but... used to just blasting that mini split and yeah. moving that air. And you know, I'm getting five going. gallon dehues all day. You know? Yeah. I like that though. Cause you get like a lot more, uh, space like for the last couple last year actually i've been growing like a smaller space and it's been really challenging you know growing in confined i just yeah. showed you my little cabinet yeah. setup man. which is fucking gorgeous i like it it's a beautiful a nice yeah. white little setup man you gotta check on my instagram you guys will see it i post a video about it today yeah. so check it out on instagram man. yeah check us out on instagram while you can yeah check out dgc <laughs> as well check out dgc's uh, page they're doing some great stuff man and uh show some love let them know what's going on man um, shout out to Northern Scrogger in the chat, dude. Northern Scrogger in the chat. We got Paul as well. Big ups to Paul. My man, Paul, all the way from France. France tuned in. France locked on, man. You know, Scrog is a banned word by YouTube. Really? Yeah. It's not like it's not like you get penalized for it, but it's just because I'm an analytics nerd and you get the, you know, essentially green and then white and black words like, you know, neutral, positive and yada, yada. And so, yeah, I go through all the uh, the cannabis keywords all through the YouTube analytics and I find ganja and scrog inside the banned words list. That's fucking wild. bro. Yeah, Funny man. that you say that, because like when I type in I can THC, which looks like it's just a bunch of fucking letters oh it don't it don't it autofill in. does but it but it doesn't autofill no, shit bro sir, it don't like yeah man it and sucks, instagram man. actually banned the hashtag i can th too god why do they do these things man i never thought the the censorship of legal cannabis was going to be a thing remember back in the illegal days when you could just fly the flag as high as you wanted yeah, and no one cared? Just do anything but now that it's legal now that we're all like it's working, regulated they're regulating that bitch hard well, bro ban Regu- us now it's uh, too little, too late. Fuck these bitches. <laughs> yep. But uh, Wild Bill got a great question, man. I don't know if you got an answer for this one, but uh, he says uh, he got a new trim tray, but the static cling is horrible. Have you Ooh. got any tri- tips for it? That's a big problem in Colorado. Uh, number one tip, if you if you can uh, manage it, is you, you probably want to up your humidity. Yeah. Uh, humidity will usually mitigate the static. And then, uh, funnily enough, if you can get some, uh, they don't always advertise it because a lot of them do. Dryer sheets yeah. uh, eliminate electrostaticity. And so, so if you true. rub a little bit of dryer sheets around, like you don't have to rub it on the surface, but maybe a little bit on the bottom, kind of wiggle it. As stupid as it sounds, wiggle it in the air above it. Yeah. It's kind of like ion exchange. It'll kind yeah. of grab onto it and it diffuses some of the... Uh, the static properties so are. true that's a great great point man you got a fantastic i was actually talking to my wife just yesterday about you know dryer sheets you're like how can people reuse dryer sheets because mm. people just throw them away there we you saw go. them on some show we watching on tv and they were like they use them for all sorts of stuff mm. but i never thought of that so dryer sheets comes yeah. back in so candy yeah when i first moved to denver my light every time i go to my bedroom my light switch would shock me every single yeah, time. Yeah, that happens so too. So I pinned a dryer sheet over it. So I turned it on with the dryer sheet, and there was no more shock. I love this yeah. man. He's so amazing, dude. Like every time I go anywhere, my wife and I like touch the car. Go oh, bang! Yeah, bang, I have a kid. Going She's three bank, years bang. old, and her hair just like looks like a scientific experiment in her bedroom all the time. I'll go to kiss her good night. It's like. Oh, good night, baby. Pop. Yeah. I did so not mean to do that. This poor kid gets electrocuted every time her parents touch her. Man, that's so crazy, dude. But the great thing is that we all share the knowledge and we can help help each other together, man. So, Wild Bill, hope that helps. She says he lives in the desert. Um, but let's keep going the Know Your Bud segment rolling, oh, man. man. The next question is uh, soil or soil less? What's your preference when it comes to growing? Well, and I'll say this is because I'm lazy and uh, uh, it's a harder thing. Uh, soil less is my thing. I And once again, uh, before I was with Dude Grows, I grew up, I'm a Scotty Real, J Maestro. Yeah. I, I'm a disciple of these guys and, so, and Grow Guru. Shout out to Sean. Uh, I learned from these guys, and so I really became a disciple of them. I went my own way. I ran Psychonutrients. Oh, okay, I got you. I liked I it because those. it's like every uh, – if you learn, if you spend like a year learning everything to learn about grow, all the stuff you're supposed to put in it, yeah. you kind of just find like it's all the bottles Psycho just – I was kind of mad at Psycho when they came out because I was like, man, now all my friends know about Humix. Yeah. No <laughs> one was you. using Humix before. Yeah, no one like, used Humic hell? Acids and stuff like that. Yeah. Humix acid, humic Acids is actually great, and that helps a lot with like the uptake of nutrients yeah. and stuff like that, right? Yeah, I always uh, – the mnemonic device between Humix and Fulvix is Humix are huge. 
So it's like the big molecules and okay. then the, the, the fulvics are the little ones. And yeah, nice. I always love the little mnemonic. I was just texting my buddy about on a guitar. He can never remember the notes on a guitar, yeah. you know, the E A D G B E and it's every acid dealer gets busted eventually. Yeah. Is so that's all the guitar notes. I e interesting. I every know acid that. dealer gets busted. Eventually you got to This man is super smart, man. He got to think of these things, dude. And that's how you remember it. Your brain is trained in different ways. That's I'll crazy. Never cool. forget, man. I love that. You know, what the, you know, our mnemonic <laughs> advice for, for open D tuning is dime gets dudes. Good buds daily. Dude. <laughs> You got a bunch of these, man. You I never forget them, man. You never forget them. That is dope, though. It's dope, though. All right. The next one is a little bit controversial, man. All right. But auto flowers or photo periods, man? What's your preference? Photo. Photo, photo, photo. Come on. We're not there yet. I really do think they, they might be the future, but this ain't the future. This is the now. And yeah. uh, I'm a photo guy. I got you, man. Well, a lot of people may tend to agree. Some people love the autos. It's all about what you prefer. And for this one, I'm asking what you prefer. And when it comes to like what you feed your plants, do you prefer an organic approach or a synthetic approach? Synganic as much as possible. Ooh, I like it. When Bringing I, the two worlds yeah, together. When I did uh, do my, because I'm switching over, you know, I want to I want to learn grow dots inside now. Yeah. You know, not just for my own benefit, but since I'm in the crew, I want to be answer. You know, if I'm getting questions about grow dots, I don't know crap about them right now i'm doing my first <laughs> ever run with them i don't True. know nothing so but it's, it's uh, good but so when i did i ran uh, ne uh nectar for the gods okay. and uh psycho together and i would try to get all that uh aminos and calcium Smart. from all that sludgy stuff i was a big harley smith fan you remember harley smith he wore the lab coat yeah you know big guy and he had the chops going on yeah and so his big thing <laughs> was uh interstitial wall space so if you get amino acids and calcium in the right uh uh, amounts it uh, increases what they call the interstitial wall space and just so like with bricks you okay. know how you get like the like the the thin liquidy stuff you know like bugs and pm and everything love it where if you get that thick yeah. nice high bricks plants so it works in conjunction with a, be a high bricks you get that thick interstitial wall space the pm i never can remember what the little nodule that pm because it, it bores into the plant tissue Literally. it's little uh it's little you know it's, it's fucked up it, that's it, what it is <laughs> it's, little, it's little plant wilbur you know it's yeah. a little schmeckle uh, it can't fit through the interstitial wall space. And even if it could, you got high bricks and it don't want any of that. True. So I always just tried to get uh, all of the, the recharge in there to get microbes, whatever your preferred microbial agent is, get it in there on the rhizosphere. And uh, as much of that salt that you can get chewed up, I always use my, my caveman analogy I like that. as like, like when you put salts on your roots, it's like it's an ion exchange, right? Okay. And then so the ion, the plant ions will take it up and they convert it up as they go through. Or then when you put microbes in it, the microbes eat the salt and shit out bioavailable food. And that's yeah. why in nature they eat rock I and then they you. excrete acids and, uh, and things like that that Damn, actually bro. go into the roots. And so when you're just going without microbes, you're just relying on that ion exchange, which we just covered on the show on Dude Grows uh, the other day is uh, electroponics. Are you familiar with electroponics? The first time I actually heard about it was on the show. Yeah, man, you use electricity to stimulate ion exchange. Very fascinating. I'm going to have to look into it someday. It sounds like some real chemistry and biology shit. What yeah, chemistry? so I pretty much, I just used the microbes to eat up all of the psycho, the psycho assault. So I used microbes to eat up that. Yeah. And I used the, uh, the, the, the synganic sort of things to try to boost all of the little organic -y sort of amino structures and calcium uptake. And I mean, I grew, you know what it is. It's hard to brag about your weed when you hang out with a bunch of great weed growers, but my weed was popular amongst the... The Pe gromies. The people out yeah. there. Yeah. Say no more, fam. So that means it's working. And if it if it's working, you don't you know go and try to change it up, man. Mm -hmm. Keep it how it's running. And Synganics, what I would say is that uh JR Token was running Synganics last year at the DGC Cup and yeah. took second place, bro. Yeah. So Synganics, there's definitely a home for it, man. Uh, shout out to Evil Genius Genetics. Can't stop Ja Love, my brother. You know it, man. Yeah, and man. he did not miss it because the next question is bong or joints what's your preference joint i can't do bong anymore it like there's there's like a flavor to a bong and then this is sacrilege to people that love bongs <laughs> aka my roommate church of cannabis nate yeah. who just like lives in his bong man bong just like it just tastes like a bong yeah i find all bongs taste the same a bong hit tastes like a bong hit yeah. tastes like a bong hit. well thank god for you brother because yeah. i usually like have to like guard my face when i say yeah. fuck bongs like, yeah, don't punch me <laughs> I've you been know. smoking J's all day, man. Yeah, I've always been. I'm just a. I'm a bic lighter and glass spoon guy since 
13 years old and that's well i don't think glass pipes had come out quite then but as soon as glass pipes inside out glass remember we called it inside out yeah if you're old enough to remember it's so true it is oh fucking hell man and the last question man is actually a great one and a lot of people uh you know get torn up on this actually there's this is the second to last one because this one is a controversial one dry trim or wet trim Oh boy, you did it. This is the controversial one, isn't that, it? I almost forgot it as well. Because it's not controversial because the answer should be dry. Yeah. The answer, it shouldn't <laughs> be controversial because the answer is obvious. But I was a uh, very lazy boy. And I, I, <laughs> you know, I, had, I had other. So I would have certain ways I did my head stash, and I'd have certain ways I did my other stash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so Two the people got the wet the trim. Double stash. We'll say. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, Grambo kept the dry stash. The dry stuff. Yeah. Because, yeah, you want a dry trim if you're going for the head. Um, yeah, so true, though. Sometimes I reach through a point where I actually don't even really trim much, man. I may right. do a little hang and dry and may do a little thing of the big leaves, and you know, but I don't get too fussed about it. I'll tell it. you, and this isn't saying you should do this, <laughs> but I always feel like that I'm in good hands whenever someone offers me a bud and it's like, barely trimmed there might be a fan leaf hanging off of it it's like ooh, this motherfucker's got this because it's like oh it holds the moisture i like to make sure the moisture content you know yeah you always hear these things like that where it's like ooh, it's true the better trimmed your butt is sometimes i'm like "Mm, yeah it can dry out a little bit faster Mm. just because you know you manicured it so well like recently we had mr grow it on the seat on the chair and he was actually sitting in that very seat where Uh, you are right now i I can feel it (laughs) and he was like the the mr grow it force is evident in the house man but anyway um he was like i showed him a jar of weed that i grew and he was like I, i was just like look at that what do you think of that he was like well firstly man there's no trim job at all. <laughs> I was like, this is non-existent. I was like, yeah, man, I don't trim, man. Sorry. <laughs> One of my favorite things. It's my favorite meme that I've ever like tried to create in my life. Cause Scotty real has his five gallon buckets, you know, and it'll just be like loose trim, if not at all trim. Yeah. And so I'll always like challenge people where it's like, yo bro, how many fluid gallons of weed do you smoke a week? <laughs> that's the real question. How man. many fluid <laughs> gallons? Because that's how Scotty that's measures how me. Yeah, I smoked like a gallon and a half this week, son. <laughs> Bro, like, no lie, guys. Like, I honestly had to see it to believe it. Like, <laughs> he moves around with like two... Three buckets, man. Three like, five three, gallon buckets. Three five oh, gallon buckets, me. man. And when you go over there, it's like he, he opens the lid off, like pop, cranks pop, the pop. lid off, like <laughs> like a legit bucket, man. Cranks that lid off, man, and like yeah. he just gets it going, man. Scotty has a love affair with five gallon buckets, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I definitely think yeah, so. He keeps man. his weed in it. He grows his weed yeah. in it. He, yeah, he storage everything, man. That's yeah. his. That's his all purpose. From seed to harvest. Scotty's seed to harvest. Gallon. Seed yeah, to harvest to storage. How many fluid gallons of weed do you smoke, bro? That's the question, man. Should we do, let's drop that in the, in the chat right now. How many, how many fluid gallons do you guys smoke, man? That's the question for today. And My if man. you watch it afterwards, drop it in the comments, man. How many of those big buckets, man? We're talking like the buckets you buy at fucking Home Depot, yeah. man. Like the big ass buckets with the lid. How many of those do you fill up? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, man. But the last question, man, uh, is uh, what was it, man? Fucking hell. Oh, edibles or vapes, man? When it, what's your preference when it comes to that? Edibles or vapes? I mean, I am going to fucking. With a bullet? <laughs> what did you say? Quick precision. Both. Oh, both. Oh, damn. Both, 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 son. So whenever you see Grambo, he has a uh, he has himself a live rosin pen and a live resin pen. A rosin and a resin a, pen. A, a rosin and a resin. Everywhere I go, I have two pens, and you won't find me very far without a dialed-in gummy. Oh, man. Shout out, Grandpa, man. The legend, man. Rosin that is, gummy, son. That is the best answer I've ever got on this show, <laughs> ever. In all the episodes we've ever done, man. He pulled up and he killed it. Shout out to Grandpa, man. My man. Oh, dude. Well, thank you, man, for tuning in. And that was just like a great episode, man, where we know like... And I'm going to take the opportunity... To do- Hit the subscribe, hit like, leave a comment. Yeah, when we dude. ask you guys to do this stuff, it's Fuck not yeah. just because it gets cliche, but it truly, I spend all day, every day looking up the algorithm and cannabis is getting kicked in the nuts in every single platform. And you want to know what the number one thing you can do to help dude grows and I can THC. This is the, this is the deep cut YouTube thing. This is, I, I haven't even said it on dude grows show. I'll say it right here is if you find one of those blue surveys, they'll have the like little sad faced, happy face, yeah, yeah, like yeah. blue survey. If you find that, 
take that and give, you know, be honest, do whatever you want. But if you like it, give a good review. That's actually the number one thing. YouTube is measuring a thing called satisfaction. satisfaction. And in the analytics, we don't get a satisfaction o meter. But what they judge your satisfaction is on, on those surveys. So they do, won't send it to everybody, but the people they do, if you spot one of those blue happy face surveys, give this man a smiley face and tell him. Tell them that you like it because cannabis is getting stripped. And if you guys are real loud, people are going to listen. Yeah. These are corporations. So if Facts. you guys get loud, send them a letter, son. Right. YouTube Susan. Rest in peace. YouTube Neil. Yeah. Neil. Now it's Neil. Now that is true. It's, YouTube not, it's Neil. no longer season. Uh, he, he hates swearing, weed, yeah. sex. He hates everything. Yeah, Poor Neil. First. Neil hates all the good yeah. things, bro. You can't cuss or smoke or anything. So man. yeah, get loud out there. And the liking and subscribing is a version of getting loud. So it's not just for us. It's for you guys. Like, Let's protect cannabis. Let's not let these guys bully us anymore. Let's get loud. Hell yeah, man. That is what's up, man. So guys, definitely, if you see that survey, Oop. please do say something nice. Drop something nice. You know, drop a thumbs up, man. All those things really help, man. As you guys would know, like people are like, yo, you only do these videos and talk about these things because uh, you want people to watch your videos because you're getting paid. YouTube does not pay me. My channel no. is not monetized. We we don't no. make a shit anything. Zero dollars. Zero dollars, zero cents. In fact, not. Uh, I applied just out of because like Dude Grow's channel got deleted. So I was like, hey, maybe I'll, you know, we're, we got a, a fresh slate. So I tried to slip it in there and I did it real professional. Like yeah. I applied for monetization and they just wrote back. No, I requested a reason why reason listed harmful content. Yeah, dude. Growing that, plants, harmful yeah. content. So they don't want to hear about that. So that's things. our new motto, Matt. Get loud, smoke loud, get loud, smoke loud. So guys get loud, smoke loud. If you see a survey, drop something in there. That's really positive. Really nice. Protect our community, protect our platforms, protect all of us together. Let's man. Change the stoner stereotype. Type, as the dude it, likes man. to say because look at how many of us are tuned in the chat right now look how many people are going to watch this afterward all you people who tuned in man let's protect it together man that's what we got to do so let's protect it together man 100 percent. hell yeah hell friggin yeah man well know your bud segment was great man i always love it because it helps everyone to get to know you a little bit better <laughs> and i think you crushed it man wow. you crushed it the best one i had on the show yet man, man. someone's gonna have to come real good to top <laughs> that shit bro straight up oh man fucking hell but man thank you so much man no, thanks thank for hanging you. out thank you for stopping it. by can't wait to hang out the cup with you that's gonna be amazing dgccup.com if you guys want to come there's there's still time and uh yeah come find me on instagram at josh grambo i respond to every comment every message i I work with a lot of the fans like you need work done i freelance i'll edit your stuff i'll make your stuff Throw me a few bucks or maybe a nug or something. Hell yeah, man. That's what's up, man. Grambo's got it popping. Grambo's just such a great guy, man. Honestly, like, can't wait to kick it with you at the DGC Cup. And very got- single. Very single. <laughs> uh, any uh, female <laughs> growers out there, out there, very he's single. ready to mingle. He's ready to mingle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Shout out Grambo, man. Much, much love, brother. Thanks so much for tuning in, man. Everyone who stopped by, thank you guys so much. Smash that freaking like. And uh, definitely check out Grambo on Instagram. Check out DGC Check out DGCCup.com. Is that what it is? Yeah, man. And grab your tickets, man, because that's next weekend, and we're going to have a fucking great time. And, um, yeah, man, thanks again for hanging out, Grambo. Thanks for having me, bro, and thank you, I Can Nation out there. Hell yeah, man. I Can Fam, everyone in the chat, thank you guys for hanging out. We had a banging fucking episode, talking a lot of podcasts, dank, sticky, gassy, and all that good stuff, and we had a fucking blast. We'll see you guys in the next one, but wait. Most importantly, stay high and stay motherfucking fly. And we'll see you guys super, super soon. Peace. Booyah. <laughs>